wild ones welcome to episode number 224 of the untamed the wild soul podcast i'm your host elizabeth dialto and i am in a goofy mood today i was actually just giggling a little bit when i said hello wild ones because some of you might get this some of you might not depending on what generation you're in there is this show that i watched growing up called animaniacs and one of the characters wacko would go hello nurse actually i think it was yakko there were three, I guess they were dogs, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, two boys and a girl. Anyway, tangent, <laughs> but it's my show, so I could do whatever I want, and now we'll get back on track, okay? <laughs> I'm not even going to edit this out, because this is real life, and this is how I am, so... If you're new to the podcast or this is your first Sunday sermon, these are shorter solo episodes, 10 to 20 minutes where I do things like oracle readings, share my favorite prayers, poems, or excerpts from what I'm reading, and they're like wild and untamed gospel, heart ponderings, and delicious morsels of wisdom to spark your own truth, power, and love from my wild soul to yours. And in these episodes... I explore creative and inspiring ideas, thoughts, and ruminations for you to be nourished and fed by going into your week. As a person who was raised with religion, another inspiration to create these sermons was to provide a Sunday ritual that's more aligned with my current and ever-evolving spirituality and worldviews. That said, all belief systems are welcome here on the show. My truth, ponderings, and curiosities are simply that, my own. And no matter what your faith is, May you get exactly what you need from listening to this, and may you remember always that everything you've ever needed has always been inside of you. You are made from love, you are love, and you are loved. So today's sermon is inspired by my very favorite childhood movie, and at the time I'm recording this, it was just Christmas time, and over Christmas I was home with my family on the East Coast. And we got really excited to go see the new Mary Poppins movie coming out on Christmas Day. Because, like I said, when I was little, Mary Poppins was my absolute favorite movie. And so for four days, we were looking forward to it. And we were even saying, you know, it's really weird we haven't seen any any trailers or any commercials. We were like, oh, whatever, maybe I just haven't been paying attention. And then when we went to look up the movie times on December 26th, we realized it wasn't coming out on Christmas Day. It, 2017. It was coming out on Christmas Day 2018. And that is why we hadn't heard about it. But either way, it got Mary Poppins on my brain. And so I wanted to do a fun Sunday sermon on some of my favorite lessons from the movie. So when I started writing this out, I had three in mind. And then when I went searching for the exact quotes that go with them, an unexpected fourth one popped up too. That's completely relevant for our times. So we're going to get to that. The first one is Mary Poppins teaches us how to make undesirable things fun so it's easier to do them. And so there's a scene in the movie when it's time to clean up the nursery with the two children, Jane and Michael Banks. And so there's a couple things that she says here. um, And she sings. They sing this song called A Spoonful of Sugar, which if you've seen the movie, you know it. If you haven't, you don't. And I'm going to do you a big favor and not sing to you because that's not enjoyable for anyone. But um, she says, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. And part of the song says, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And what I love about this is Mary Poppins is giving all of us a lesson in energy. In the scene, the nursery is so messy. So it's a daunting task. It doesn't sound or look like much fun, but she makes it fun by incorporating her own kind of magic And therefore, it ends up being a blast. Now, you and I may not have the fictional superpowers of Mary Poppins, but we all have the power, the creativity, and the ability to make things more fun than they initially are through things like music, dancing, shifting our attitude, or inviting friends to join us, just as a few examples. And I'll give you a personal example of my own. When I was moving in August of 2017, I only had a week to move. So I had lots of packing to do and lots of friends to say goodbye to. So my friends who wanted to see me, I just kept inviting them to come over and keep me company while I packed. I didn't need or want their help, but I wanted to see them and I still had to pack. So it killed two birds with one stone and also made packing go faster and was much more fun because I was catching up and I had company while I was doing it. 
The last quote from this part of the movie is this, and I love this so much. She says, well begun is half done. And I think of this, especially in terms of having some kind of morning ritual to anchor you into the energy and intentions that you want to bring to the day, right? What she's basically saying is how you begin a thing is, go, is, is part of the battle. It's half the battle because just getting started so often, and those of you who are procrastinators, you can relate to this because getting started could be painful. So she says, well begun is half done. And the example I'm giving you is a morning ritual because if you are able to start a day feeling aligned and prepared to have an amazing day, no matter how much you have to do or how stressful it might seem, you will have a better day rather than if you hit the snooze button or you don't take any time to yourself and you just let the day take over and run you, you, start, uh, you can start a day feeling energized and empowered. And as always, I want to acknowledge that our listeners come from all walks of life and have various experiences, so you might not have a lot of time to dedicate in the morning, but even five minutes is good enough. Maybe you just breathe, say some prayers, or use a mantra, or move your body for five minutes. Or maybe you weave these things into getting ready if you have limited time, like say some prayers while you brush your teeth or chant a mantra while you're in the shower. I actually love doing that because the acoustics in the shower are amazing. And minimally, just take three deep cleansing breaths before you get out of bed. Morning rituals don't have to be elaborate. Um, And if you want a simple one, I have a nine-minute morning ritual that you can try. You can go to wildsoulmovement.com forward slash ritual to grab that. But again, this goes for anything. So I think of things that aren't super fun, like doing dishes or folding the laundry. Um, Those are two of my least favorite things. I'll put on music or I'll open the window or I'll light some incense. I'll do anything to make it even marginally more enjoyable and it always goes by faster and ends up having a better outcome anyway. So that's our first lesson from Mary Poppins. The second one, she is clear on her value and she has killer boundaries. And two examples of this come about when she is interacting with Mr. Banks, who in the first example, he is her future employer, and in her second, he is already her employer. So here's what she says. He asks for her references when she shows up for the interview to be the nanny for his children. And Mary Poppins says, oh, I make it a point never to give references. A very old-fashioned idea to my mind. So she's clear on her value and her worth. And by the way, I'm not recommending that you speak to your employer this way. I'm just giving you Mary Poppins examples. And then, um, so she goes on. She says, now the qualifications. Item one, a cheery disposition. I am never cross. Item two, rosy cheeks, obviously. Item three, play games all sorts. Well, I'm sure the children will find my games extremely diverting. Now, it's important to notice here, if you have not seen the movie, that the list she is reading from of qualifications is actually a list the children had made that the father, Mr. Banks, had ripped up and thrown and burned in the fireplace. So it wasn't a formal job description asking her to have rosy cheeks. It was like the ideas of little children, which starts to introduce us to her magic because he's like, um, where did you get that piece of paper? And she doesn't explain herself. <laughs> which is awesome, but it's also the second lesson. So once um, they had gone out on an outing with Mary's friend Bert, who's a chimney sweep, and they were dancing all over the roofs of London with the chimney sweeps, and they came back absolutely filthy, and Mr. Banks asks Mary to explain all of this, and she responds, first of all, I want to make one thing quite clear. I never explain anything. <laughs> I just love her so much. And, and the lesson here for all of us is that we don't owe anyone any explanations. You don't wish to give, whether they ask or not. And it reminds me of this saying, no is a complete sentence, which I believe originally comes from Anne Lamott, but it has been credited to a lot of other people over time. It's so liberating and it takes some adjusting, especially for those who are people pleasers. But it feels so good to invest, to not invest energy on explaining everything to everyone all the time. And it's also possible to do this with kindness. This is something I talk about in my book, Untame Yourself, and the Courageous Conversations chapter. Um, So if you're like, but how do I do that? I don't want to offend anyone or hurt anyone's feelings. It's in the book, and you can grab it on Amazon at untameyourself.com forward slash Amazon. 
So the third lesson from Mary Poppins, which I think you all realize is probably my favorite, is that laughter brings magical energy to situations and increases the odds of amazing outcomes and possibilities. So there's a scene in the movie where Mary and Bert and the kids go to visit an old friend of hers. Actually, what happens is Bert finds her in the street because the old friend is having a problem. (laughs) And the problem is that uh, he is super upset. And when they get there, uh, they start laughing and then they all float up to the ceiling. You really have to see the movie if you haven't seen it. But anyway, so part of the lyrics of the song say, I love to laugh long and loud and clear. I love to laugh. Um, the more you laugh, the more you fill with glee. The more you feel with glee, the, the more I feel. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> See, I, I get so excited about this. I'm really not editing any of this out. Let's start over. It says, I love to laugh long and loud and clear. Um, the more I laugh, the more I feel with glee. The more the glee, the more I'm a merrier me. And I've probably said this on the show before, but I'm pretty sure one of the reasons I laugh the way I do with the frequency I do is because I watched this movie like 17,000 times when I was a little kid and I was only like three. So it's possible that I really thought that if I laughed hard enough, I might just float up to the top of the ceiling like these people in the movie. But either way, it just taught the lesson of fun. And what's also cool throughout the song is they're going through all different types of laughs. And they're saying, like, it's all okay. It all works. So either way, what I learned from this was not to hold back my laughter. And that was totally okay to laugh all the different ways, from a little giggle to a giant laugh to bursting out loud to screaming, all the ways that people laugh. And it's always been my favorite. And even in my adult life right now, Um, If I'm not having a good day or I just need a quick and easy way to shift the energy of something, a good laugh goes a really long and a really effective way. And this is not, I want to make a distinction here, this is not using humor as a defense mechanism or a bypass. It's consciously finding humor where it isn't obvious in choosing to let a situation be lighter, in bringing levity to something heavy as an, assec- as an effective way to break up the heaviness without denying or distracting from it, but as a way to be with and in a more useful, productive experience of whatever's going on, this helps you to not take life or yourself so seriously in times when doing so is making things hard or creating more challenge than necessary. Or sometimes I just need to shift the energy and it's not possible to find humor in the situation. So I will do something like go to my favorite accounts on Instagram that have funny memes or watch a um, (laughs) – one of my favorite things to do is watch these uh, compilations on YouTube of Steve Harvey on Family Feud, which if you've never checked those out, go check it out. It's hilarious. Um, Other ways we do this regularly are with Feel Good Fridays. I basically stock up. I take screenshots of funny posts all week, and then I share them on social media and in my Facebook group with my Wild Soul Movement women. People watching is another one. Not to make fun of people, but to notice them being their quirky, amazing, hilarious selves. I also, something I do, is I let my imagine play out hilarious scenarios I would never actually do or create in my life. And... So what's cool about this is this is also a way to bring play into your life and explore the limits of your sense of humor. So that was lesson number three. And those are my three lessons. And then here's the surprising fourth one that came up in the quotes. And what happens in this scene is the children go to work with their father, Mr. Banks, who happens to work in a bank. And they get in trouble while they're there. And so they like run away. And so they're scared. They're in the streets of London. It's dark out. They get approached by a scary old lady. And then our friend Bert appears again and runs into them. And here's the deal. Um, I had never noticed this until recently. And the reason why it really stood out to me is because in light of current events of men's behavior with the Me Too movement and so many men, thankfully and finally, being held accountable – An unfortunate side effect of that is that there are a lot of really good, amazing, honorable men out there who would never do the stuff that these other men have done that is now still having an impact on these good men. Um, 
it's causing a lot of confusion. People don't know how to act. They don't know how to behave. Because sometimes when people are angry and finally getting a taste of the justice they deserve, they direct their anger towards an entire group of people. Like instead of the men who have done this, it's like all men are bad, which we know isn't the case. Even though it's only a portion of the male population that is guilty of the offenses, um, it's not right or fair um, to all the rest of the men that are actually good, that don't do these things, to be blamed or to be treated as if they have done these things. And listen, I want to be really clear that anger is totally justified and it's a very healthy emotion and people should be angry. As I always say, though, people shouldn't get stuck there. So I wanted to offer that as a preface to this last lesson, which largely reminds us that there are good, honorable, respectable men out there, and it also points towards our culture's treatment of men and their issues and emotions. This is actually super wise. So the lesson is that a father can always use a bit of help. And Bert is talking about a father, but I think this applies to men in general as well. So here's what he says to the children. He says, let's sit down. You know, begging your pardon, but the one my heart goes out to here is your father. There he is, in that cold, heartless bank, day after day, hammed in by mounds of cold, heartless money. I don't like to see any living thing caged up. And the little girl Jane says, father in a cage? And Bert says, they make cages of all sizes and shapes, you know, bank-shaped, some of them, carpets and all. And then Jane says, father's not in trouble, we are. And Bert says, oh, sure about that, are you? Look at it this way. You've got your mother to look after you and Mary Poppins and Constable Jones and me. Who looks after your father? Tell me that. When something terrible happens, what does he do? Fends for himself, he does. Who does he tell about it? No one. Don't blab his troubles at home. He just pushes on at his job, uncomplaining and alone and silent. Michael, the little boy, says he's not very silent. And Jane says, Michael, be quiet. Bert, do you think father really needs our help? And Bert says, well, it's not my place to say. I only observe that a father can always do with a bit of help. Come on, I'll take you home. Now, I love this because it's super compassionate. And again, I think the movie Mary Poppins came out, like the story I believe is from like the 1920s. And I think the movie it might be from the 40s or 50s. I probably should have looked that up before I started recording this. But it's also from, you know, a couple decades ago. So we can put it in context for our own times as well, not necessarily take it as literally, but take it for the the metaphors and the implications. Um, it's compassionate and it's insightful and it invites the kids to consider what their father's experience is from another perspective. And that's what we're all about here on this show, inviting in different and in some cases higher perspectives to see things in a way we hadn't before that hopefully brings us to greater love trust, compassion, connection, and understanding, forgiveness, and even peace. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. As always, I appreciate your time and attention. I appreciate that you share these episodes with friends and family, privately, and on social media. I appreciate the reviews you leave on iTunes, so thank you for those. And I can't wait to meet those of you in real life who are joining us for Wildstorm Movement Weekend Workshops in 2018. The schedule and locations are up at wildstormmovement.com forward slash WSM Workshops. And if you want to check out links to anything I referenced during this episode, this is episode number 224. So you can go to untameyourself.com forward slash episode dash two two four so that's all i had for you today have a beautiful week